Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Lulu's Way. I'm really glad you're here. I was just about to have my lunch and I thought maybe you'd like to join me. This lunch looks really good. So let me show it to you. It is cauliflower rice baked with uh, smoked paprika and some garlic powder. I have some sliced up zucchini, um, also baked with smoked paprika. I have some artichoke hearts. I have um, some uh, Japanese white sweet potato and a little bit of cooked grains. They're mixed together because it was the end of the sweet potato. So um, um, I needed to add a little bit of, of the uh, rice to get it to four ounces. And four ounces of chicken, a tablespoon of avocado oil, some salt and pepper, and some chopped up chives from my garden. There's nothing else planted. These come up every year. They just come up every year. What else comes up is the um, green onions, the scallions and the chives, they just come back every year, um, uh, which is beautiful. And they also multiply, which is great. So they just keep getting, so a lot of times, like one of the plants might be getting so big that I just dig a big chunk of it out and go plant it somewhere else. So then there's another one to get really big. And I really, I use them on like all three meals. I've been using them in my omelets in the morning, my uh, rice grain, um, omelets with chives. It's so good. Mm. Mm. So yummy. So yummy. Gotta take my supplements. Those are all my supplements. Just for lunch. Oh, a bunch of them. I'll fill that up for tomorrow. Tomorrow's lunch. Mm. So I did a bunch of prep cooking today. And you know, when I was done, I thought I should have filmed all that. I made some really good stuff pretty quickly, swiftly, just getting her done, getting her done. Um, I made the cauliflower. I made the zucchini. I baked some chicken. I baked some fish. And I did a instant pot full of broccoli and sugar snap peas. Then I did a batch of kale with some minced up garlic in the pressure cooker. Um, so I had all these containers out. They were all cooling. Covered them all. They're all in the fridge. Um, Should have shown you. Maybe next time. But I like to stay prepared. I like um, just staying on top of things. As I need things, I make sure I have them. I like to have things all cooked ahead of time so I can assemble meals. That's the way it works for me. Some people, you know, cook for every meal. They're cooking and so it's right out of the pan onto the plate and they like it fresh like that. And I, I get that, but I don't mind at all assembling a meal with cooked items from the fridge, assembling a meal, 
in an oven safe dish and then just throwing it in and heating it up. It just It just works perfect for me. Mm. This rice cauliflower is just really good because it's kind of like having rice. You know? <laughs> so I've got this idea of, um, you know, when I travel in my camper van, it's very small. Everything has a place, um, place for everything. Um, things are a little tight, especially under my bed with the storage I want to take. Things can get a little snug, but I can always, I can fit everything that I, that I truly need. I can't always fit things that I want, but I can fit everything I need. So it's been working out well for me, but I've been entertaining the idea of getting a cargo box for the back of the van. I can't put a cargo box on the roof because my roof, uh, real estate is taken up by, uh, solar panels and max air fan. Um, so I saw Jan from Butterfly Tracks. She was at my last meetup in March and I saw this, um, cargo box that she put on the back of her van. So she's got the, the hitch and then she's got this swing arm hitch. So it goes into the hitch receiver and then on this hitch goes this big, huge cargo box um, that has a lock and key. And it's, I think it's about five feet long. It's about two feet wide and about 17 inches tall. It's a lot of space for a lot of stuff. Um, so that gets attached to this rack and it has a swing arm. So you just kind of loosen this one bolt and then you lift up the pin and the whole thing swings from the back of the van off to the side so you can get in your back doors. Um, I really, I was looking at that saying like, you know, if I ever thought for a minute that I need a little bit more space and maybe I could use a bigger van, um, I was kind of thinking of like a Chevy Express, not a big high top van, but just a, a something a little bit roomier. I said, you know, I really don't need any more elbow room because I've created that for myself where I feel like I have the space that I need to get around but I don't really have room to take anything extra um, and there's some things that I've been wanting to take since my experience with staying on the beach for three months there's some things that I would like to take that would make my uh, beach bum life more enjoyable uh, and I can't because of my limitations. So I thought about getting this cargo box. It would solve that problem. So the swing arm hitch, um, it's on Amazon. It's about close to $600 for the hitch. Um, the cargo box that goes on, on the, the swing arm rack, is pretty close to six hundred dollars too. The one that I have picked out, in my opinion, you don't cheap out on this stuff. I don't want one that's less expensive. I want a good quality. I don't want it to rattle. I don't want it to be have such um, low weight restrictions. I want. Um, I just feel like this is not a place to cheap out. Uh, I called my mechanic and asked him about, I, I need, I don't have a hitch receiver on my van. So I'd have to have a hitch receiver installed. So he told me it would be 650 for parts and labor to have a hitch receiver. So I'm looking at about $1,700 to have this box on the back of my van. And it seems like a lot of money. I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it and I have until the fall really because um, any traveling I do throughout the summer is not going to be extended periods of time and um, um, I don't need that extra storage for short trips but when I do take off this fall because I plan on taking off for the fall for a few months 
coming back for the holidays, leaving again for the winter for a few months. That's my plan. Um, so I have time to think about it. Um, the box would sit low enough that it wouldn't cover my license plate and it won't cover my lights. So it doesn't have to be like an electrical, an electrical uh, hitch receiver where I have to have plugged in. So I have to, sometimes you have to have lights on the back. If you're trailing something, you need to have lights on it and um, everything should be just fine. Nothing should be covered up, except I won't be able to open my back doors unless this thing swings out. And that's another thing that you don't want to cheap out on this because if it's going to swing out, you want it to swing out with ease and to have no problem. It just goes and it just clicks into place when it goes off to the side. And then um, it's probably going to be like right around table height. Um, and I saw videos of people like cooking on top of it. Like you can use the top of it as a table surface outside. So that's another plus. Um, the things I want to take, the things that I would like to take with me that I can't fit. I would like to take a beach umbrella. I have a five foot beach umbrella, opens up to a 10 foot circle. It's really nice and it screws into the ground. Um, and uh, you could put a couple of chairs under it, maybe even three chairs under it, and it would give you a lot of shade uh, without carrying one of those big um, canopies. Um, and I have it already. Um, uh, I'd like to put that in that cargo box. Um, also my rug that I carry that I, I have, it's on the floor right in between my pallet cabinet and my, uh, cooler. It sits there and it's, it's fine. It's fine. I'd rather it not there. That could go back there. Um, I could really clear out some things from under my bed that are making things a little tight, like my toolbox my jigsaw i always like to travel with those two things because you just never know what kind of projects you might want to do on the road i have my leveling blocks that i don't use very often but when i've needed them especially in arizona oh my god they were they were just a godsend and i have a pack of four of them and i decided that they were they can't when i needed them they were so great uh i wished i had had another set of four uh, so I got, I did get another set. So now I have eight of them. I could put those in there. Uh, I have, um, I could put like all my winter clothes in there when I'm traveling summer, you know, cause you always take both with you because you kind of need them both, you know? So the, the warmer clothes, the cooler clothes, they can, I can swap them out and just keep the ones handy under my bed. That's for the current season. Um, I want to take a tap dance floor. Um, I figured it could be like two feet by four feet would be pretty good. It's probably about the one that I have on the floor here. I might have to take an inch of it off so that it will fit in the cargo box, but I would like to take that on the road because it would just be fun to have it with my tap shoes. Uh, so I like that. Just any extra supplies. Um, my awning, that awning I have could go in there. Um, I truly believe that it would make my traveling experiences better by having these things with me. Hmm. Don't wish. Another thing that I would like is a lounge chair. That camp chair that I have is very, very good. It's very, very comfortable. I love how small it folds up so small and it's, and then when it's open, it's very comfortable. Um, I have no problem assembling it every day and taking it down every day. It's no big deal, but sometimes I just want to lay down, <laughs> you know? Um, just to kind of stretch my legs out and maybe close my eyes. Um, I would like a lounge chair. I would like to bring a lounge chair. I'd like to find one that was pretty narrow and that when it folded up, it didn't take up a lot of space. Cause I mean, I have like four zero gravity chairs that are really, really comfortable, but when they're folded up, they're, they're fat. Like, I don't want to take something like that. I want to take something that's has, takes up very little space. 
Um, I wouldn't mind having one of those in my cargo box. Um, also, every so often I, I think about going in the water at the beach when I'm at the beach. I'm not a fan of, of um, going in there. I, I need to bring uh, water shoes. Uh, I didn't have any with me, but I'd like to bring water shoes to go in the water because I just don't want to feel that mucky bottom. I just don't, I don't enjoy that. <laughs> and um, I wanted like some kind of a float to float on. And I found one today, I went to Target and I found what I think would take up little space. It wouldn't be a big deal to blow up and it looks really comfortable. I'm gonna show you a picture of it right here. So you see it has those two, uh, two blow up sides and then it has kind of like almost like a hammock. And now if you look at the back of the package, you'll see the three different ways that they say you can use it. And I picture myself floating around in the water with that and um, perhaps enjoying that. So I would have space to put that. Um, and then I have my compressor, my ear compressor for either a flat tire or to blow something up. That could go in my cargo box. I also have my battery starter charger there. Um, that could go in the box. I have like a lot of things that I could clear out of the van, make room for other things in the van and also just room for space, just space. I don't have to fill that space up again, you know, um, just having that um, wiggle room for everything. So I just haven't pulled the plug yet. Uh, $1,700 is a lot cheaper than getting a bigger van. Um, although I don't think I would do that anyway. I think I would just live without the stuff. So basically it doesn't, it's not like, 1700 or a new van it's 1700 or don't take the stuff so i have to think about how important this stuff is to me and it's feeling kind of important it feels like it could improve the quality of my life when i'm traveling um and uh i'm all about quality of life you know it's only going to add maybe three feet to the back of the van so i'm still going to fit in a regular parking space um anyway i guess we'll just see We'll see what I end up choosing. If anybody has any uh, experience with these boxes, these um, on the back of their cars or vans, I'd love to hear any opinions you have about them, um, especially if you're familiar with this particular one. I know that Jan has it. Jan from Butterfly Tracks has this exact one. Um, she's very, very pleased with it. Um, uh, and she's full time on the road. Um, I'm also thinking that when I'm not traveling, I can take it off the back of my van. I just unhitch it and then I can still fit my van in the garage. Like I don't have to keep this box on year round. I can just in reinstall it back on when it's, uh, when I'm going to be traveling. So, um, yeah, just something to think about. I think I'm going to, um, you know, probably think about it for like another month and I'm probably just kind of get on it and get that, um, get that, uh, hitch receiver installed and um so but if anybody has any input at all any advice uh um pros and cons of these types of storage systems um let me know in the comment section i'd really appreciate it The zucchini is so good, so good. Everything's so good. You know me, I love my food. <clears throat> I tell you, the best thing on here is these gosh darn sweet potatoes. They're just so good. They're just so creamy and sweet and delicious.
So my tap dancing is starting to come along. I'm, I've been practicing these gosh darn Alexanders <laughs> for a few days. And um, to be honest, I'm struggling with them. I'm struggling, like, I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. Uh, both sides, both sides. And I'll be like, I did it. And then I can't do it again. Then I try it again, I can't do it. And then I get it and I do it like a few times in a row and I'm like, I got it. And then I try it again, can't do it. Uh, and then I keep trying to do it and I keep messing up that one side. So um, I'm just gonna keep at it. I'm gonna keep at it. And then after the Alexander, there's just one more little step series to tack on. And that's the end of the first lesson video. There's four of them. So that means it's a quarter of the song. It's the first 30 seconds of the song. The song is two minutes long. Before I move on, I wanna be able to do it all the way through without making mistakes. I wanna make sure it's really cemented in my head before I move on. So, but <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it. It's it's a challenge, uh, but it's just fun. And I could listen to tap shoes all day long. <laughs> it's the best sound. So I'm gonna go finish my lunch then I'm going to get on my bathing suit. I'm going to go out in my hot tub in my black tube and I'm just going to lay back and relax and probably have a snooze because that's just what I've been doing these days in the hot tub is I've been falling asleep. But the sun is shining. It's like in the 50s. Um, perfect, perfect hot tub weather. And that's what I'm going to do with the rest of my day. And uh, thanks for joining me for lunch. And bye for now. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Good, now let's connect them both from here. Six, seven, eight. I'm always ready to dance. Doing the best that I can. I should have I should have not sang so I could get my circle. <laughs> Try to remember how to do a scuff. I'm gonna have to look up the scuff. Oh. Let me look at this again. Six, 
Seven. <laughs>